Karen. Are you there? Aún no lo vemos como presentación. Uh, can you see it? No, we can't see it as a presentation yet. Perfecto. There, yes. Yes, there we see it. Well, now I'm going to, as I was introduced by Andrea, my name is Janina Pensky. I work as a leader of service registry, and I'm going to update the transfers in the LACNIC region. So first of all, what is a transfer? A transfer is when an A organization will transfer a block to a B organization. Based on what is established in the policy manual, we have three types of transfers for different reasons. One of them is merging, acquisition, reorganization, and relocation. Another is uh, transfer of IPV store, uh, IPv4 resources into region, which are, are have been enabled since March 2016. And we also have transfer of resources, uh, IPv4 resources outside the region into RIR. And this was implemented last year in June 2020. The implementation of the transfers of the IPv4, especially the latter, had uh, an impact on several systems uh, developed in LACNIC, including who is me LACNIC, RPKI, the resource certifier, the IRR, DNS reverse, and several more. In addition, it Another consequence was that much of the LACNIC staff collaborated and it also required inter, uh, coordination with uh, the uh, NIRs in Brazil, Mexico, and the RIRs that have implemented uh, this uh, transfer policy too, including RIPE, IRIN, and uh, APNIC. Some comments on uh, this type of transfers that are established in the policy manual. There I leave the link just in case you want to see it in further detail. One is that you they, these can be done uh, inter-region or intra-region. And we also must highlight that if an organization received an IPv4 block from LACNIC directly to be able to transfer that block partially or fully, we'll have to wait three years since uh, it was assigned by LACNIC. Also, a block previously transferred totally or fully cannot be transferred again until a year later. And a legacy resource that is transferred will no longer be considered as such. Now, now we'll speak of statistics and numbers of the transfers that have been made so far, both in the region and outside. Here we see the number of transfers in orange intra region and in blue inter region you see that intra region they started in 2016 and outside the region since last year so we have this is this information includes up to april this year we can see that the behavior that it's growing apparently in 2020 it went down a bit but actually if we add the inter rir transfers it's not the case and so it's to be expected that in 2021, they will continue with that growing trend. Here we see the number of IPs transferred. In the past, it was the number of transactions, but here these are transfers, and this is the total number of IPs transferred. In orange, you see those intra-region, in blue, uh, inter-region. Uh, and we see an increasing a growth in the number of IPs uh, transferred. So now we're going to go more specifically in the intra-region analysis. Here you see an overview of what happens at the regional level. Here you see the net IPs, that is the summation of the IPs received by a country and those that leave the country. In dark, you have the ones that are received more, uh, the, the ones that received more. And so in dark blue, Mexico, and in light blue, Argentina, we'll see the details. The IP addresses transferred intra-region, that is, they 
are growing uh, starting in 2016. And now we are going to see the behavior by country that offers, that is that transfers from, and then the country that receives it. As to the transactions that we've had so far from the countries that offer, Brazil is the country that had more transfers. And if we look at the number of IPs transferred by offering country, Brazil also is the one that transferred more addresses, Argentina following it uh, closely, and then there's a big leap, leap, and then we have Panama. However, if we look at those that receive, we can see that Brazil too is the one that had more transfers in the number of IPs. This means that there were several transfers that were from some one region in Brazil to another. So it didn't have such an impact. It's not that many addresses left Brazil or entered Brazil. And here you have Colombia too, but there's a, an important leap. Now, if we look at the net balance per country, that is the summation between the ones that a country receives and those that are transferred from that country to another, we see that Argentina is the country with more addresses that have left the country, almost 100,000 IPs followed by Panama, 95. And then there's a big leap, Brazil, as I said, from those that, if we consider those that uh, came in and went out, there's not such a difference. And the one that received more, as we saw in the map earlier, is Mexico. Now we'll see what happens with the inter-RIR transfers. Here you see the number of inter-RIR transfers. Let me remind you that these transfers are quite recent, starting in June last year, that they were implemented to, to, until April. That's where the information available. We, so there were seven transfers uh, entering our region and 19 leaving. So there were 26 inter RIR transfers and the number of IPs. There we also see about 65,000 that left and about, oh, and almost 8,000 that have come in inbound. Now we are going to see the outbound transfers per country and then the inbound transfers per country too. As to the outbound, we see that Argentina here is the country, both in number of transfers and in number of IPs. It's a country that um, uh, has uh, the, it, it, uh, with the, the most and the inbound. Uh, we see that Brazil had um, four, but in number of IPs, Chile was the one that uh, uh, with more inbound. Uh, uh, then we it's followed by Brazil, Colombia, and Guatemala. And if we look at the net balance in this inter-RIR part, we see that Argentina, again, is the country that has from where more IP addresses have left. And here we see we have an idea of the outbound transfers from where and where do they go to. If you look at the arrow, most outbound uh, from Argentina went to Singapore, Canada, a bit to Puerto Rico, Turkey, and then several of the one, those that have left these countries have gone to the United States. And here there are some small ones, Honduras, Venezuela, and some other countries of another regions, Turkey, Spain. So now the analysis of the inbound uh, addresses, how the movements have been, we see that there is not so much movement because they have been a few so far, but we see that most have come in from the United States. And as I said, most uh, went to Chile, uh, others to Brazil, and then here, uh, Afghanistan, Guatemala, um, 
Spain, Colombia. Now, there are some that were completed very short time ago, others are underway. Some conclusions about these numbers. We saw in the general graphs that both the inter and intra RIR have a growing tendency since they started regarding in the region, the intra RIR, Argentina is a country that transferred the largest amount of, of addresses, 100,000. Mexico is a country that received the largest amount, about 60, 56,000. Outside the region, country is the Argentina is a country that's transferred the largest amount of addresses, 28,000, and Chile is the one that received the least amount, 24,000. I now open the floor for questions, or we have the Q&A space. Thank you, Janina. If you have any questions on this topic, please take this opportunity to clarify any questions you might have. We give you a couple of seconds if you wish to ask any questions or make any comments. Eli, would you like to make any comments? Do you have any questions in the chat? No, Andrea. Oh, yes, there is a question. Let me see. From Eduardo Preve. Have you estimated the prices managed for the, for the transfers? Thank you, Eduardo, for your question. I think that there are several sites of brokers who publish the prices. I don't have the official information as to the variation in the prices because I think this largely depends on how these are sold. But we can find out if you wish. Thank you, Janina. There's another question from Teresa Lopez. She said, do these transfers have to do with a greater access, the incoming with migration? What is this demand due to? The amount of transfers, the growth in transfers is because clearly there is a need of organizations that need IPv4. And because LACNIC at present is in phase three, LACNIC has no more blocks to offer. We're only assigning the recovered blocks. We cannot always assign blocks, so organizations sometimes do need these IPv4 blocks. And because they cannot access to blocks assigned by LACNIC, they access to these from other sites through transfers from other organizations. Thank you, Janina. There's one more question from Augusto Mauturin. Very interesting report. Do you publish the data on which are the IPv4 addresses that are transferred? Thank you for your question, because it is good. This is something I did not mention. In our website, as a policy, we publish all the transfers that take place. I'm going to share with you the link so that you can have it. I'm going to include it in the chat. And there you have all the transfers that were carried out from where and to where. I'm going to include this in the chat so that you can view it. The answer is yes, and these are published in our website. From where, towards what other country and on what date. Thank you very much. Janina will include the link in the chat. There are no more questions now. Augusto's last comment, great, good job. Uh, one more question now from Nancy Cordova this time. The question is, in the transfers in the region, does LACNIC currently have available blocks? Can you read it out again? In the regional transfers, does LACNIC currently have blocks available? If I understand the question, LACNIC has no blocks available. 
the transfers are done from one organization to another. An organization offers addresses and they transfer the addresses to address blocks to another organization. LACNIC is not offering these. We are in phase three. We only assign recovered blocks and we don't have always when we recover blocks, we assign them, but these transfers are done from one organization to another.